So, if you're living in a small town, you're a photographer, and you want to try street photography. I just got back from a week in Boston where I was spoiled with the walkability, the huge city, tons of stuff to do, the subway system. And on top of all that, everywhere you look, there's something to shoot. Somebody's doing something interesting. You have Chinatown, you have the skyscrapers, you have the piers, you have the harbor areas, Cambridge, Harvard University. There's so much to look at, so much to see, so much to shoot. But the truth is, is that we don't all live in Boston or Philadelphia or New York City uh, or one of these places that is ripe with street photography opportunities. And even though I'm from Denver originally, which is a fairly large city, right now I live in a small mountain town in the south, in, in western North Carolina. And I struggle with the same thing quite a bit. So after I returned home from Boston and remembered you know, the contrast between living in a mountain town of 200,000 people and Boston, I felt called to make a video for other street photographers like me who might be living in a small town uh, or just don't have easy access to a major city metropolis area to go shoot in because street photography doesn't have to be done in a New York City type of area. And so the purpose of this video is to give you some ideas, to give you some tactics uh, for if you're starting out in street photography or if your area is um, beginning to feel a little bit stale. Now the first thing on this list is probably easiest and probably um, one of the best tactics that you can use in a smaller town and that's the fishing technique. So a lot of us have probably heard of this, a lot of us who have done street photography have probably actually tried the fishing technique whether we were consciously uh, aware of it or not. And the fishing technique is where you find a composition that you like and you sit and wait um, for the right subject to walk through or whatever it might be um, to change about the scene so that you can get the shot you're looking for. And when you're in a small town um, with less foot traffic and um, fewer subjects to shoot, fewer subjects walking through the area that you need them to for the shot that you're looking at, this can be a really valuable way to um, make sure that you get the shot that you're looking for even if you're not in a major city where there's a constant stream of people in and out all the time. The second thing you can do does require a little bit more prior planning and research and it also requires you to have a bit more of a flexible schedule and that is look for events that are going to draw people and things that are interesting to shoot. So um, check online for festivals or events in your area uh, that are going to draw a large crowd of people all in one area or um, things like classic car meets uh, that'll give you a bunch of really cool subjects to shoot. I mean, even farmer's markets can be a lot of fun sometimes. So if you live in a small area, look for um, the things that are, that are gonna draw a large crowd um, and give you plenty of subjects to shoot. And if you can line up your schedule with something like that, it'll make it a lot more fun to go out and a lot more productive to actually go out and shoot in your city. And the last thing that I'll add on is, uh, even though it might be a little contentious with certain members of the street photography community, I don't believe that street photography always has to do with people. I think that good street photography, you know, the best street photography definitely has the human element. It has something to suggest that human beings are interacting with the world around them in, in some kind of interesting way, but that doesn't necessarily mean that people have to be in every single photo. And so one thing that you can do, this is actually something that I'm taking from uh, Roman Fox, who's one of my favorite street photographers, and it's basically a photography-oriented project. So if you live near water, um, document how the uh, waterfront changes with the seasons. Or if you live in like a more suburban area, maybe you can document um, strange things that you find in people's front yards. Whatever it might be, um, there's always something to shoot whether it's you know true street photography or not, is a really good way to get out in your city, in your town, even if it is smaller, even if it's not New York City, and document things uh, about the human element, about how humans interact with their environment um, in a way that's just conducive to where you live. But anyway, regardless of how large your town is, how many people live there, how photogenic it is, I promise you there's always something to shoot. And I think that limitation is one of the best informants of creativity. I think that if you are you know, struggling to find something to shoot, a lot of the time what will come of that is actually something that's really unique and really compelling. So I would just encourage you to get out there, um, find something that's interesting to you, and maybe consider using these tactics to um, make it a little bit easier to find the type of compositions or scenes that you're looking for. So if this video was at all helpful to you, um, be sure to share it around your community. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will catch you in the next one.